organizations must take immediate action to report a potential data breach to the ICO within 72 hours. The Sotero Data Breach app provides a secure platform to quickly report, manage, and track data breaches, as well as notify stakeholders and regulators. Employees will simply need to navigate to the Report Data Breach link on their company's internet page and fill in a simple intake form. This intake form will provide the security and compliance team with the initial detail required to trigger a report and investigation. Once the employee has submitted the intake form, the security and compliance team will be notified and the appropriate member will be assigned to the record. Once that member logs into the Satera Data Breach app, they'll be able to see an overview of their current reports and investigations on a role-based dashboard. Information can also be displayed to them in bar, bar charts and pie charts. These visualizations can also offer a quick entry point for users to drill down into the records. Once a record has been accessed, participants will be able to view various details relevant to the report. They'll have an understanding of where this report sits within the life cycle. They can also collaborate with each other and post activity and information to the activity feed, as you see in the center of the screen. Breach reviewers will be able to capture some additional information from the end user, such as breach type, subtype, financial impact, and reputational impact. All of these details go into the calculation for the risk score. You can see that this record has a risk score of a priority A. The priority level will determine where this record should go next within the life cycle. In this case, since it's priority A, an investigation has been requested. This is why we already have a breach investigation record associated to this report. Let's jump into that breach investigation record. As a breach investigator, they'll have access to the investigation record. All documentation relative to the investigation can be housed here. Additional information and tasks relevant to forensics, if required, can be captured here as well. This particular record currently has an ICO report that's been generated, but hasn't yet been submitted to the ICO. Let's take a quick look at the report that's been generated before we submit it directly to the ICO. This is an example of the document that's generated for the ICO. You can see that information relevant to the report has been captured here and mapped directly to the document. Now let's submit the report to the ICO. Once we submit the report, you'll see that the status has now changed to ICO in review. The ICO will actually receive an email notification such as this one with a high level overview of basic report and investigation details as well as a link to download a copy of the report that's been generated. Once the ICO conducts their review, then they may want to provide some feedback. In order to capture the feedback on the record, a user will simply need to hit the provide ICO feedback button and feedback will be displayed within the record in the ICO feedback section. Once the feedback has been received, internal parties will be notified of that feedback and the decision to close the investigation can be made. Once the investigation is closed, uh, the appropriate stakeholders will be notified of the closure and additional wrap-up tasks can take place.